It's hard not to notice the big names like Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, and hey, even disgraced musical and fashion genius Kanye West are all actively investing in land. Calling these guys rich is an understatement. To quote my favorite hippie and America's cool uncle, Bernie Sanders, they are in the 1% of America's 1%. For instance, for some reason, there's a TV executive who is worth an eye-popping $2.4 billion. A weirder fact, that guy who's named Ted Turner owns an eye-popping 2 million acres of American land. That's more land than countries like Monaco, the Maldives, Grenada, San Marino, and more combined. So what in tarnation is going on around here? Why is there such a surge in the number of people buying raw land in the United States? Well, the answer might surprise you that it's not just the wealthy elite who are investing in land, but ordinary people like you and me are also buying land to diversify their portfolios live out their lifelong dreams, or like me, do a little bit of both. We'll get into that. Many have concerns about the stability of their assets and are searching for better returns in the coming years. So let's dive right in. But before we begin to chat about the billionaires, let's see what this trend means for you and me. First and foremost, it's important to understand that land is a finite resource. They aren't making any more of it. In fact, land will adjust with inflation. Land, just like gold and silver, is a great way to hedge your bets. Because as the rate of inflation grows, then so will the goods and services that are produced from the land. Real estate, including land, is also at its peak value. Those billionaires that we're going to dig into real soon, they recognize the value of real estate, but also the potential, metaphorical and literal, that the fruit of owning land can bear. Okay, so let me break that down. As the population continues to grow and the demand for food and resources increases, land can and will be utilized even more for various purposes such as timber, ranching, farming, grazing, mining, you name it. On top of that, there's a new trend emerging where people are buying land for a unique purpose. Let's call them land hackers, land BNBs, whatever you want. People are buying small lots of land, I mean as small as three to five acres, and renting them off by the acre to people to do what they would like. So one acre can be rented to a person who lives in a tiny home. Another acre can be rented to someone who would like to farm but doesn't have the means to buy a large plot of land. Another acre could be rented to hunters or anything of that sort. You kind of get the point, the possibilities are endless. But my personal favorite hustle is buying land and creating a glamp site and offering some type of unique destination. For instance, I bought a small plot of land for pretty cheap right before the pandemic hit. I built an A-frame cabin on it and I rented it out on places like Airbnb, VRBO, and HipCamp. Last month, I made over $2,000 from it. Now that is an almost comical oversimplification of the process and what it took to get my land and my business up and running. But you know what isn't comical? The insane rate of return I'm swimming in. So who's laughing all the way to the bank now? Okay, so let me stop flexing and remind you all that land has its own financial class and it is not affected much by stock market fluctuations or other extenuating circumstances. So what that means is that land is a super stable long-term investment, which is why a lot of rich people like to park their money in that type of investment while also being able to get other factors out of it, such as a place that they can go hunting, they can go camping, or other friends could use it for whatever reasons. While treasury bonds are considered safe investments, they currently yield only around 2.4%, which can't even keep up with the rate of inflation in this economy. Many landowners are earning around 10% annually on their investments. However, it's essential to acknowledge the downsides of owning raw land. Unlike stocks or real estate and properties that can generate passive income, raw land doesn't provide immediate cash flow. Either way, owning land grants you the freedom to use it in a crazy amount of ways. You can grow crops, sell goods, explore other options such as timbering, ranching, mining, short-term or long-term land rentals, and even establishing a wind or solar farm to generate electricity. 
Bill Gates and conspiracy theories go together like watching my channel and hitting the subscribe button. One of my favorite conspiracy theories is about Bill Gates and his strange obsession with US agriculture. The rumor is that the former Microsoft CEO owns more than 80% of farmland in the United States, and he's actively trying to purchase that last 20% so that way he can own the food population and stick a microchip up your butt or something like that. Now that would be amazing if it was true, but it's just not. In a recent Ask Me Anything Bill Gates did on Reddit, he got asked about this and admitted that he actually owns only one in 4,000 of all US farmland or about 270,000 acres spread across 18 different states. Now that's nowhere near 80% of the US farmland, but it's still a little more than one third of the entire state of Rhode Island, which is a surprising amount for one person to own and enough to make Bill Gates the largest landowner in the United States. Well then, we see the financial reason that billionaires and regular folks are investing in land in America, but what are these rich people even doing with all this land? Jeff Bezos owns a lot of land across America, but he uses the farmland that he owns in Texas for rocket testing. Bill Gates, on the other hand, focuses solely on farmland and agriculture, specifically growing vegetables and potatoes, which are sold to corporations like McDonald's for their famous fries. You heard that right. Bill Gates is one of the largest suppliers of French fries to McDonald's. So next time you're eating a golden hot French fry from Mickey D's, you have the former CEO of Microsoft to thank. Now, both of these dudes lease a portion of their land to regular farmers, which is actually a growing trend. Leased farmland actually accounts for a significant portion of the total amount of farmland in the United States. The U.S. Department of Agriculture estimates that 30% of all farmland is owned by landlords who don't farm themselves and just rent it out to others to make money. Kanye West owns a ranch in Wyoming. West's big dollar investment seems to have stemmed from his views on the importance of being a landowner. He tweeted in 2020, we have to evolve, buy property, buy land. His plot of land includes eight luxury cabins, which can house up to 20 guests, as well as a saloon, restaurant, and meeting facilities. Unfortunately, Kanye West's plan to build a futuristic, egalitarian community that bridges low, middle, and high-income housing has hit a major roadblock, and it could result in his special prototype homes being torn down. See, Kanye built four dome prototype structures on his 300 acres of land that he owns in Calabasas. He was hoping to create a whole community of new age homes and a society that breaks class barriers. But here's the problem. Neighbors complained to the LA County Department of Public Works and after inspectors came out to the property, they determined the project violates all the building codes. Kanye had to tear them down immediately because of the county. The average cost of an acre of land in the United States is around $12,000, but prices can vary depending on location and acreage. Bulk purchases of hundreds or thousands of acres can lead to significantly reduced prices per acre. And real estate is a hyper-local market, meaning costs vary greatly from different regions. Now, when you buy in bulk, you save money, you can get more. Everyone knows that. That is why these billionaires never buy a couple acres at a time. It's always hundreds to the thousands. Land ownership offers stability and potential for high returns. By holding onto land, its value increases due to growing demand. We may be witnessing another land rush in the United States, with both the wealthy and average individuals recognizing the opportunities land presents for financial growth and diversification. But sometimes it's hard not to feel like a dog chasing a car or a policeman or a postal worker. What is the dog going to do when it actually catches it? Most of the time, the dogs just get to what they wanted and sit there and do nothing. I say that to say that buying land is just the beginning of the process. Check the video on the screen right now so you can see the smartest ways of starting a business if you own land.